All right, good day, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tisha Spencer, and I am the owner of Original Original Travel Plat uh, Original Platinum Travel. Sorry, guys, I'm reading something at the same time. You should never try to read and talk at the same time. And I'm also a business owner. I am a business coach. I am a luxury travel agent. And I focus on the cultures and the cuisines of the world. Now, I book everything from land and sea. And today we're gonna to talk about group cruises. Now this is part two of a series of trainings on group cruises. Previously, we spoke about what is a group cruise and how to prepare yourself for a group cruise. Now, if you are watching this live, you can go ahead and put your comments inside the chat box and we'll get to them. If you're watching this on a replay on YouTube, put your questions inside of there and I will get back to you. And as always, make sure that you are like, liking and following the channel, A Travel Agent's Guide to Success. Now. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love cruises. Now, how many of you guys have actually been on a cruise before? Because in order to sell a cruise, it kind of helps for you to have been on a cruise and actually sailed a cruise before. Now out there, there are de definitely different types of cruises out there. There's different levels of cruise ships out there. You have, everyone knows about Carnival, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Virgin Voyages. You have Celebrity, Princess, Oceana, Azamara, and then that's not, that's not even talk about the fact that there are tons of river cruises out there as well. Now, all of them allow you to do groups and all of them call, um, all of them are called groups except for Virgin Voyages, they call them circles. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people have been on several cruises popping up. Somebody's actually going on a cruise in three days. I'm so jealous because in three days, I'll still be sitting at my desk working on month end work. But I wanted to talk about booking for cruises for groups because of the availability and the different things that you can do on a cruise ship that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do on a land. Now, just some basics. For a cruise, average is 10 cabins. Um, 10 cabins equals a group cruise. Um, it's not necessarily about having all double occupancy, though some of them will say that it has to be double occupancy, but most, most of them are just strict on the 10 cabins having to be booked. Um, I've personally been on oof, maybe 10 cruises in the past seven years. I know one year I did five cruises in one year. I've been on Royal Caribbean, Carnival, several Norwegians, Virgin Voyages, Azam, no, not Azamara, Holland America, um, getting ready to go back on another Nor Norwegian at the end of the year, beginning of next year, doing Virgin again next year. And I'll be doing Norwegian this, this um, fall for the new Prima. So I've been on a lot of different cruises. I've sent groups of individuals on cruises. Now, the reason why we like group cruises is because one, again, just like regular cruises, it does increase your bottom line. It does increase your profit because the more cabins you book, the more money you're going to make. One of the great things about a cruise, whether it's infinity or speculative, and I'm going to talk about those, is the fact that you have something that is going to call, be called a, affinity. Um, points. Now I'm saying it like this because everybody calls it something different for each cruise line, but basically these are the benefits that you get to give to your groups. So all the groups have something, whether it is extra onboard credit, it might be um, deliveries of sparkling wine, sparkling um, apple juice or grape juice, uh, chocolate covered strawberries, a fruit tray could be delivered. Some, a lot of them do uh, cocktail parties, which I highly suggest you do a cocktail party because whether it's private or not, it gives your group a chance to meet, connect, have some fun and possibly meet other sailors on the ship as well. They'll do different things like, I know Carnival does the room upgrade sometimes with the, with the points. Now, every group will have a certain amount of points. I know with uh, Royal Caribbean and Carnival, you can buy more points. Um, Norwegian just has a set amount of different things that you could choose from. Now with Norwegian, the way theirs works is they'll have, especially if you, depending on whether you do affinity or speculative, and we're gonna break that down, they'll have a different list of different types of groups, um, rewards that you can give them. I like to make sure that for Norwegian, we always give them all of the, um, the drink, the beverage, the Wi-Fi, and the excursion credits automatically included inside of it. Some of the other things that you can include with many of them is photo sessions, which is great for groups where you can give each cabin, say, 10 photos that they could take throughout the ship. And this will include a group photo because one of the great things about group cruising is you want them to go home with some kind of memory, some kind of memento from the trip. 
Um, now, I don't know if you guys have, or anybody who's watching has done the training, but every single cruise line does have group training. Now, I'm personally going to focus on the three main ones that I know that either I book or a lot of the agents I work with book. So we're going to go ahead and share the lovely screen. Now, I've already logged into, um, I've already logged into all the sites and everything. So this is Carnival. Inside of Carnival, they have something that is called the training and events. And when you go into the training overview, it takes you to their loyalty rocks. Now, inside of here, there is a training that's called group sales. Now, this training is only 15 minutes, guys. And this will actually break down all of their information about, um, about group sales, about um, the amenities, what the benefits are for the travel agents. And as we all know, there's all different types of benefits and this will apply to everybody. Now, one of the things is when you do a group, you do get your group to stand down. The reason why this is, is because for a lot of times we all get the matching shirts or the matching bags or the matching cups and stuff like that. We just did a group cruise and they all called us the ladies in blue because we wore blue shirts every day part of our sorority we wore a blue shirt so all of the crew and all of the workers and even the other guests on the ship say well where the rest of your ladies in blue where the rest of you so people will start to recognize them and recognize your group and maybe you know it allows them to have more fun because it was just more fun to us to have people recognize who we were um there's all different types of different things that you can do benefits are increased sales now this doesn't matter which um cruise line you work with you are going to have increased sales. You're going to have opportunity for additional commission through all of all of this. You are going to have a diversified clientele because remember, if you are working with somebody who is your Pied Piper, they're going to go ahead and get everybody for you. Now, let me break down affinity and speculative because I know at this point, you're probably like, well, she just tell me what the difference is between them because she keeps saying them. So affinity and speculative are similar, but not the same. So affinity basically means that if they have something in common, they have, whether it is a sorority, fraternity, whether it is a, uh, a love for, um, I've, I've seen so many different things, a love for, um, where was one of, we, oh, it was a knitting group. It was a knitting group that came on board and that was basically it. So I was looking for this slide right here. So basically, when you're dealing with affinity groups, you're dealing with family, friends, social clubs, associations, they essentially have something already in common that brings them together. Corporate and incentive groups are basically when you have a company or a, um, well, basically a company that is giving away groups, um, giving away cruises, or maybe they, like car dealerships do this a lot where they'll give away a free selling for the top 10 sales, sales people in their region or something like that. Um, a speculative group is basically people who don't really know each other, but they're all coming together maybe because of the itinerary. Speculative groups are groups you put together yourself and find people to attend. Affinity groups tend to have something that puts them together, that glues them together, something that they all like. Like in this picture, it could be Halloween. You could do a Halloween affinity group and have a couple of people who love the who love Halloween, and that's what's bringing them all together. It's this love of Halloween, or it could be the love of video games. It could be the love of karaoke, the love of casino. Because yes, there are a lot of people who cruise just to play in the casinos. Um, but this is the training for um, for Carnival. It's only about 15 minutes and you know you want to go in there and learn the training learn the booking system learn how all of their their different programs work and um, be available now you can have family reunions you can do all different types of stuff professional associations are really great for doing conventions because the spaces are free and all the cruise lines you never have to pay for the spacing they get to bring their family they get to bring other friends with them in a lot of cases and then you can actually if you have a large enough group or any of these cruise lines you could customize so much just for them now another one is first mates now if you're not part of first mates i highly suggest you get a part of first mates um this is for virgin voyages the only adult only cruise out there that is sailing there are no kids allowed and it's such a wonderful thing so you go to sea academy and you go inside there and they have a training it's in the scarlet tier so you got to start from the beginning and work your way up but they have what they call circles now their circles program is still developing it's still growing um the circles program is what they call their groups now what I like about this about Virgin Voyages is no they do not give your group any special pricing for booking 
um, a group with them like many of the other cruise lines do. What they do instead is they allow you to create your circle whenever you want to. So you can have four people are booking, then six people are booking, and oh my goodness, you got 15. You can now turn that 15 group people, 15 cabin into an actual circle. Now, some of the benefits of having a circle is one, all of your bookings will be linked, automatically linked. So you don't have to manually try to link them. They will also be set up so when you do dinner reservations, they'll all be included. Now, on Virgin Voyages, they don't have a buffet. They don't, they have all their food is basically, basically specialty dining, but this will allow for you to, as the group leader or to help the group leader, set up specialty dining maybe two or three times on the sailing. This is also, this will also help you when you're doing shore excursions. This will help you with so many different things. But when you book a certain amount of cabins on there, you, the travel agent, actually gets to earn bonus I don't want to call it a commission because it's not necessary. I'll call it like sale loop for right now. That's the best way to explain it. So if you book, say, 15 cabins, 20 cabins, you'll actually earn extra money that you can either use one to go back towards the circle to maybe purchase a cabana or three for your group at Club Bimini, or you can use it to maybe raffle off a cabin because it's a pretty significant amount of money that you can earn the larger your group is. Or you can save the money for yourself and book the next group and book your, book your next booking for the next group. Especially if you're doing this um, every single year, you're doing annual or biannual cruises. That's a great thing to be able to have. Now, speaking about that real quick, one of the best things to do is, so say your cruise, we're going to use Monix, for example, we're sailing in January. Final payment is in September. By August, at the very, very latest, by August, they're already going to know about the cruise for 2024, because what we want to do is, is get them locked in for the next group cruise. And while they're sailing, they can actually secure that group cruise while they're on the ship. And you don't necessarily have to travel with your groups to make good money and have all of these benefits. I know that's something that a lot of people think you have to sail with them to get everything, but you don't. Because if somebody else is the Pied Piper and someone else is the leader of the group, they would lead the group. They would take care of everything else. You would just felicit, uh, facilitate all of the training, um, excuse me, all of the bookings and the cabins and help them with reservations and different things like that. And you may be on call while they're sailing for any help that they may need, but you, won't, you don't necessarily have to sail to get all of the benefits, which is great. And if they decide to say, hey, you know what? We want to go ahead and do this again next year, same time, different ship. Guess what? You can actually coordinate, set that up on your end while you're sitting back at home in Tennessee, set everything up, and then just tell the group leader, okay, great, your group is set up, send everybody to the, the sailing room. We're just going to call it the sailing room. Every cruise line calls it something different, but it's where you can go and book your next cruise. Because what happens is a lot of times on these cruise ships, they give them so many benefits to book their sailings while they're on the ship. Now, let's say you have somebody who's on the ship, wants to rebook, but doesn't want to do what the group wants to do a different sailing. Guess what? Your name is on record as their travel agent. So it doesn't matter which cruise line you're on, they will be rebooked with your name as the agent. Just always ask your clients that if they do that, to let them tell, let them make sure that they tell you about it because you're not going to necessarily always get a timely email about that situation. And you want to make sure that if they say, hey, hey, I booked this cruise and these are the dates, you know, I want to make sure that you're my agent again to help me because you was just so wonderful. You want to make sure you go ahead and get that information, make sure your name is on it so you can go ahead and get credit. So like this training here for Scarlet Tier did not take that long at all. It didn't take that long at all to go ahead. And then Norwegian also has it. Now, this is in the Norwegian back office. If you don't have access to it, I highly suggest you get access to it, especially if you're going to be doing groups. That's another thing. Thing thing for groups, you must have access to their back office. For some of you, you have booking engines inside of your um, travel agency. You cannot create a group through the Odyssey. I believe it's on, uh, Odyssey is the most popular one. You cannot create a group from there. You have to go through the actual cruise line, whether you do it online or you call them on the phone. I personally like to do it online because I don't like sitting on the phone that long, trying to set everything up. I like to see everything. So they have a training in here as well. It's called group sales. So inside of here, now you can take this training out of order. It doesn't matter. They have three trainings, building and booking groups, delivering the perfect group experience, and group sales frequently asked questions. Now inside of here, it's going to be a lot of the same information, but each of these trainings are going to be tailored 
for their brand. Now, one of the things I want you guys to understand is that when you are, when you are booking your, your clients, you have to qualify them for a cruise line the same way you qualify them for a land trip. Now, in order to do that, you must understand and you must learn your cruise lines. Now, if you're watching this live or in a replay, I want you to type in some your favorite cruise lines in the chat. Now, in order to learn about the cruise lines, I understand not everybody can just up and jump on the ship whenever they want to, though it would be a beautiful life, wouldn't it be? Um, take their trainings, but you have to understand who each cruise line caters to. You have to understand who your clients are and where your clients would want to go ahead and travel to. Now, I'm seeing where Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, Carnival, 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 MSC. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Carnival is where most people start out because Carnival tends to be the cheapest cruise line out there. And they are very family central. Now, understand, if you are dealing with an older crowd, if you are dealing with somebody who wants a little bit more luxury, if, you want, if you're dealing with somebody that wants to have that VIP experience, Carnival is not going to be it for them. Carnival is a safe place for clients. I mean, safe place for agents to book people. I want you to understand if you are going the luxury route, Carnival is not for you. That is not a luxury level. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people um, saying Carnival. Um, Carnival, don't get me wrong. Carnival does have, has some good benefits. They have come out with some newer ships, the Mardi Gras, the Horizon, the uh, Panorama. They have some new ships that are amazing and they're making strides to try to elevate the adult side of it. So understand if you're dealing with Carnival, you're dealing with younger kids, 12 and under, people who have very low budgets, try, not trying to spend a lot of money. Carnival is also located around the country and a lot of the ports. Carnival has dominated that as from the East Coast to the West, to New Orleans to Florida, they have a lot of places that people can actually um, sail from, which is great. Um, well, the, someone says that the commission is not that great, but you got to understand the commission is the same commission that of most other cruise lines based off your agency. The difference is when you're booking a $1,500 cruise for somebody versus a $3,500 cruise, the commission is definitely going to be different. So the higher the cost of the cruise, the higher your commission is going to be. And if you're dealing with Carnival and they have lower prices, well, guess what? Your commission is going to be low. Now, Carnival does have, have, to me, I've sailed Carnival several times. I like Carnival, but Carnival is not where my clientele goes. Carnival is not where I would go. I don't have young kids. I don't have people with young kids. Most of my people are older, which is why I send them to Norwegian. Reason why I like Norwegian. Norwegian is definitely multi-generational. Norwegian is definitely a place where adults can be kids. I've taken my mom on, I think, two Norwegians so far, and she loved it. She loved the fact that she could stay up all night with the band and listen to music, drink her martinis, that there was always something to do on the, with Norwegian. But Norwegian also has the adults only. Norwegian also has suites where um, it's called the Haven. Now, the Haven is what I call the ship within a ship, and every cruise line except for Carnival has it. It's basically a VIP preferred area. Now, when you are booking groups with any of your cruise lines, a lot of times you cannot post suites into your numbers. All the time, there's only going to be a certain certain categories per ship that they are going to allow you to pull. Majority of the time is inside, ocean view, and balcony. Norwegian also has solo cabins, which is great for people who want to sail but don't want to have to do the single supplement and pay double. They can be put into a solo cabin, which is an inside cabin. Now, solo cabins you also have to pull into. When you pull your, for Norwegian, when you pull your solo cabins, your havens, your suites into your group, you have to make sure that the pricing is adjusted for all the group amenities before you give them a price. Now, with Norwegian, you can't hold a reservation for three days before they cancel it out and deposit is due. Norwegian is known for the all-inclusivity aspect. Now, Norwegian, I think, is really good for those people who don't have a problem spending anywhere from $1,500 to $3,500 for a cabin based off of maybe a four to seven day sailing. You know what I mean? Staying inside inside to um, balcony. They don't have a problem spending a little bit more money because they know they're going to get more because for majority of these sailings, dependent need, even with the sales, you can set it up so that when they book their cruise with you and even with the group, they can get all of the drinks included to include non-alcoholic and alcoholic anywhere during the day. 
They also have access to all of the dining. Plus they'll have anywhere, they'll have access to the specialty dining. They'll have free Wi-Fi for one person in the cabin. You can always add more. They'll have a short excursion credit. And a lot of times right now they're doing the second person flies free. Now you have to choose the right type of group in order to get the right amenities. There is the affinity group and then there's the speculative group. With them, if you get the affinity, they're going to lock your rate in and they're going to give you a certain set of amenities you can choose from. The good thing with Norwegian is when you do it that way, it allows you to select different amenities for different cabins. So you might have one person that says, you know what, I really want the 10 photos. Another person might say, you know what, I really want that extra excursion. Somebody else might say, I I'd rather the onboard credit. I honestly don't give them all those options just because it gets very confusing trying to remember and figure it out and how to market all of that. I tend to just give them whatever their group leader says is going to be best for their group. Um, one of the things I like about Norwegian also is the food is really good. They have the Haven Suites, which do allow kids in there, but it's a locked section of the ship. So if you don't have a special key code, you can't get into those rooms. They also have special access to um, the booking for like the spa services, the excursions and all that other stuff. And of course the commission is higher because those rooms tend to be extremely high. I'm working on a booking right now for an 11 day cruise with Norwegian and the commission alone would pay, is more than what I make in, at my job in 30 days. But the room is beautiful. It's a two bedroom family villa suite on a ship. So on some of these ships, they do have villas and suites and beautiful spaces. Now, when we're talking um, Virgin Voyages, now Virgin Voyages is brand new. Virgin Voyages is a whole different level. I've sailed on it and I'm already booked for another one, thinking about booking a third one. There are no kids allowed. You must be 18 years old at the time of sailing to get on this ship. Now they have ocean view um, interior or inside and they have um, balcony rooms and they have what they call um, the rock stars. They have two different levels of rock stars. All of their rooms are really good size because we had somebody in a solo ocean view cabin and their room looked just about the same size as a regular ocean view cabin. Virgin Voyages also doesn't do single person supplements. So if one person's in a room where there's two people in the room, there's no double pricing. The way that they do their pricing is it's based off the cabin. If you do two people in the room, the only thing that doubles is the actual taxes and fees and port fees and stuff like that. That's the only thing that will actually double. And of course, the insurance will double because you're going to give them insurance. With the circles, again, you can start the circles at any time that you want to. When you have enough cabins, you can set up with the circles. Well, the way that we had our set up, I was a rock star. So my rock star agent actually took care of everybody inside of our group as far as helping us set up dinner reservations together, show reservations together, and different things like that. But as a rock star, I checked into the ship faster. I had my own little sitting area with my own little snacks, and we got escorted onto the ship early. It was given a glass of rosé, and our rooms were ready. One thing I can say about Virgin Voyages, Virgin Voyages is going to be more for your adults who like to have serious fun. This is not a ship for people that want to sit down, relax, and chill because there's a party going on everywhere. We were sitting on the deck one day and the girls just came out and just started singing at the pool, like out of nowhere. You know, this is not a ship for anybody who does not like to have serious fun. This is a ship that is all about one love. So you will see all different types of people on this ship. You will see straight, you will see LGBTQ, you will see older people, you will see younger people. There's a whole mixture of different people. Norwegian is more for multi-generational families. Norwegian is really good for having all the way up into the 60s because my mom's in the 60s and had a blast all the way down to the younger kids. Norwegian and Carnival both have amazing kids programs. So there's still going to be something for the kids to do. Virgin Voyages has no kids program because there are no kids. We had a blast on Virgin Voyages. I would send um, people, honestly, who want to have fun and want to party all day, every night. That is what Virgin Voyages Virgin Voyages is about. Now, all the cruise lines, no matter which ones you work with, they all will help you with your groups. So if you ever have a question about your groups or how to book a group or how do I do this for my group, pick up the phone and give them a call. Call your customer service and ask for the group's department. Do not call your BDM every single time you have a question because that's not really what they're there for. They're actually there for um, other, other, other things. Now, when you also, when you do a group, um, 
you can book group level excursions for all of these cruise lines, book group level excursions. You'll be able to work with either the cruise line or you can work with a third party um, program like shore excursions and shore trips to do different things like that and still earn commissions on that aspect. Um, when you book your excursions with Carnival Norwegian, I don't think you get commission. Virgin Voyages, you do get commission. Um, a lot of the cruise lines do allow you to set up air so you can add air packages, shuttle services. I do suggest that when you are doing a group to have a pre-hotel. Why? Because you want them to meet and greet and you always want your clients to show up for a cruise period the day before just in case of flights. So one of the things that you can do is have a hotel set up. You want to find a hotel. Either you can work with the cruise line or you can do it separately. It's totally up to you guys. Um, if they have a reasonable hotel and um, it's a nice hotel, I would do it through the cruise line because you get more amenities. They'll pick you up from the airport. They'll take you to the hotel and then they'll pick you up from the hotel and take you to the port. But the reason why you want to do this is because the night before you could do meet and greets. If you have bags you want to give away to people with like t-shirts or mugs or whatever, you could do it the night before. There's a chance for everybody in a group to meet each other before we actually, that's what we did. We did ours. We met up the night before a bunch of us and we went to a Cuban restaurant. Then we hung out in the hotel before we got on the ship the next day. But it's a great way to, re to connect with everyone. Now, let's talk about some marketing aspects. Now, if you have questions, of course, put them inside the chat or drop them inside the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. One of the great things that I suggest that, it, that when you're doing these is to have cruise nights. Now, some of the cruise lines will help you with it. They'll provide you with videos that are in their marketing department. Some of them, your BDMs might jump on, especially if you have a large number of people who have already committed to it. But the purpose of a cruise night is to introduce the cruise line, introduce the cruise ship, introduce the event, and have, if you have a Pied Piper or a host or a series of hosts, they can come in and talk about the trip, why they're doing this, why they're so excited, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get to introduce yourself. You get to talk about the pricing, the deposits, and just hype up the trip and get everybody excited. I would do this several times leading up to the final payment date. And then once everyone is said and done and you have everybody set up, you know who's going, have another one, have a pre-departure cruise party. So basically you might have to do two or three of these because you're not gonna be able to get everybody every single time online. But during this time, this is when you finalize and say, okay, do you have your passport? Does it expire six months from the day we return? If you don't have your passport, these are the documents you must have on hand. Make sure you pack this. Please do not pack that. You know, because you have some people that will try to pack their entire closet and you really don't need it. Do's and don'ts of the cruise line. Any safety issues that need to be discussed with COVID because every cruise line is slightly different. Some cruise line, well, all cruise lines, right, as of this filming, all cruise lines require that you are, um, you, you test negative and you have, you've been fully vaccinated. Um, the only people so far who have been excluded are those with medical and even then they still may not be allowed on the ship because they are at higher risk of getting sick versus people who have been vaccinated. Um, many cruise lines are doing on the site testing some of the cruise lines are free. Virgin is free. Carnival is not. I'm not sure about Norwegian because I haven't experienced Norwegian since COVID, I don't think. I think my first one is going to be this summer. I mean, this fall. But um, just be prepared. You want to make sure that they're completely prepared. You want to make sure that they're printing out their baggage, their baggage tags. Um, as a gift, you can maybe send them the baggage, the luggage tags. And that's something that you can bring to the ship the night before because you can get them on Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. You want to make sure that um, people are packing their medicines and packing the right medicines. There's like a list of things that you can go ahead and make sure that they have and they have ready. Make sure that they're doing their onboard check-in. I had a client that asked me, did they have to do the onboard check-in? And I said, yes, if you want to get on board. The reason why you want them to do it online via the app that you're going to ask them all to download is because one, it gets them on the ship faster. That means that there's less paperwork, less for them to do when they get to the terminal. They can just get in there, check in real quick and sit down and just chill out. If they are in the suites, they get to go to a special area and they get to check in even faster. But you wanna make sure that they have the app downloaded as well, because that is gonna be how you communicate. All of these cruise lines now allow you to speak to the different guests um, through their app, where you can send messages and see where people are. You can make reservations for dinners, shows and stuff together. But as a group leader, 
or with, with the group leader, you should really do a lot of that in advance. So that way they know exactly what's going on. You want to make sure that you go over the itinerary several times with them so they know what to expect, especially if you have excursions set up for them. You want to make sure everyone is kind of on that same sync because if you have a group cruise and you have 20 people going, that's 20 new clients that are inside of your CRM that can be booking other different trips along the way. So you want to give them the best possible service that you can. Now, when you are doing a group cruise, you are going to have a contract that is going to be set up through the cruise line that is pretty standard. They're all kind of the same. They all kind of say the same thing overall. You know, each cruise line has a little things, little things that are different, but they all are kind of the same. Um, you want to make sure you, you look over it. Make sure you keep up with the due dates of deposits. Now, Carnival's deposit is basically um, $50 per person to hold the space. It's not to birth a cabin at all. It is just to hold space. Norwegian's deposit is $125 because you are actually birthing somebody inside of, birthing somebody inside the cabin. Virgin Voyages is 20% of the total price, unless they bring back that 50% off sale, which I'm hoping they do, because um, you're actually birthing them inside of a cabin. I prefer to birth people into the cabin, so that way we're not losing spaces anywhere, we're not losing the group, and anybody who's actually in a cabin, say you don't make your full numbers for the group, you still have them inside of a cabin, and they're ready to go. Now, some of the questions I tend to get when it comes to groups is, can I, can I market this group and add other people in the group that may not be a part of the main group? Yes, there's nothing that's gonna stop you because if I'm doing a group cruise for people who love the color blue, but I got people who love the color red that wanna go, I'm gonna book them in the group as well. I'm gonna give them the same amenities, all the same information, but it doesn't mean that they all have to do everything together because those who love blue may wanna go skydiving, right? But those who love red may just want to go to the beach and just relax. That's perfect. I'll just book two separate excursions. It doesn't mean that you have to tell everybody that you booked all these random people. They don't need to know because all they need to worry about is their group. The only time I don't do things like that, if it's like um, weddings, honeymoons, family reunions, um, you know, girls trips, guy, like real intimate private stuff, I won't necessarily um, throw people in their group. But if I need to in order to keep their group status, I will. If they're short by two cabins, I'm gonna find two cabins to get booked in there just to make sure that they get their group, their group settings. Now let's talk about let's talk about something different when we're dealing with groups. When you're dealing with groups, you need to find out upfront before you price what do they want to do on the ship. Are they asking for a meeting space? Are they asking for specialty dinners where they're gonna have a private dinner or a semi-private dinner in the dining space or one of the restaurants. Do they wanna rent one of the restaurants out for the night? Do they need AV support for anything? Are they bringing a DJ on board? Are they having a party? Is the party, party gonna be private or is it gonna be open to the entire group? Are they trying to do wine tasting on the ship, which you can do? Do you wanna have a cigar party, which you can do on certain Norwegian ships because they have cigar bars? You know, what are you trying to do on there? Are you trying to do early morning yoga? Are you trying to do sunset yoga? These are the things you want to find out from them because you're going to have to coordinate with the ship to make sure that one, they have a space for it and that they're allowed to actually do it. Now, I have seen people do the yoga and everything like that. A lot of times you coordinate with the gym and the gym will, will maybe facilitate a 6 a.m. class for you guys before the rest of the ship has theirs at 7 a.m. And they may do some special things. Some of this may cost. So if you need AV support for any of your meetings, there is an extra fee for it. Not for the space, but because you got to have somebody on site to do the AV stuff. Some things that you can also do on there is you can have culinary classes where you can have the chefs come in and actually teach a class on culinary, teach a class on how to eat healthy on a ship. And they'll teach the class, they'll have some food samples. There may be a cost associated with that because they're actually doing something out of the norm just for your group. You can even do group spa days. You have to coordinate that early about what you wanna do because they, you will be taking up a lot of spa spaces and that's gonna cost extra. Guys, you can even fundraise on these ships. All you have to do is communicate with the ship, that, with the cruise line that you wanna do a fundraiser. They're going to tell you their, um, their rules and regulations behind it, how to do it, how to upsell, different things like that, whatever it is that they need. And you could turn your cruise into a fundraiser where you could say, do a cruise for March of Dimes. And for every cabin that is booked, $50 goes to March of Dimes. And if you book, say, 10 cabins, how much money did you just give 
to March of Dimes. People will cruise for a cause. People will travel for a cause because it makes them feel like they're giving back to people. So essentially, I think that's about it when it comes to cruises with groups. Um, again, as always, as far as marketing goes, it is not your job to create the flyers, market the flyers, market the trips, if you have a Pied Piper and if you have a group leader. If you are just putting a trip together and hoping and finding people to actually sail with you, then you have to do all the marketing yourself, whether you do a Facebook group, a Facebook page, a uh, Facebook IG ad uh well any other social media ad is up to you to do all of that marketing and you need to sail on that ship so if you're going to do a major marketing to get people to go on a sail and that you don't have any kind of leaders or anything for you need to be that leader you need to book the cruise because the last thing somebody's going to do is say wait you're putting together a july 4th singles cruise and you're not even going like you haven't booked your room yet like why haven't you booked wait what's going on people gonna be more amped if you go and then you can also run incentives because we all know for most of these cruise lines, I'm not positive for Virgin, but I know for um, Norwegian and Carnival, every time you book, I think it's 10 cabins, you get either one cabin free or one free upgrade or something like that. You get a little incentive behind it. Well, guess what? You can use it as a contest and say, hey, anybody who can secure 10 cabins for this trip, I will give you a cabin upgrade or something like that. You can incentivize people to tell more people to get on the ship with them. And no, who doesn't like getting free stuff, especially on a cruise ship? Um, other than that, that's about it when it comes to booking group cruises. There's definitely a lot of work into it. You do need to be organized. You do need to keep up with the different cabins you have. And yes, if you do overbook and say you only chose 10 cabins and now you need 15 or you sold out a balcony, you can always go back and request more. And it's only when you get to, I think the average is 30 cabins or so before you have to go and move up to a special group section when they're gonna have to help you because your group is just big. Just think about it, 30 cabins, two people per cabin. On average, that's 60 people. So you actually get um, additional benefits the larger your group is. So um, does anyone have any questions thus far about what we have discussed? I see no questions, but I do see that my special guest is here. Um, if you do have questions, keep putting them in the comment section or um, in the chat. Um, Natasha, are you available to either come off camera, but definitely come off mute? Hello. Hey. So guys, what I want, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and introduce somebody to you who joined this business right before. Um, right before COVID started. And then since COVID has been done, I, I, I think she's like been on a ship more than anything. I don't know how long she's been on land. Um, but from what she's been telling me, she is the Royal Caribbean queen and she <laughs> has been doing so many bookings with Royal Caribbean. So I wanted to um, invite her to come on to discuss um, her experiences with Royal Caribbean, her experiences with getting into groups, her experiences with um, with just cruising. So first off, I want to let you go ahead and just introduce yourself to the masses. Okay, hi. My name is Natasha Wallace. Uh, I've been with uh, uh, my agency now for two years. I started, like uh, Tisha said, just before COVID. Um, so I've always loved cruising. I've been cruising uh, for over 20 years before I ever became a travel agent. So that's just one of my passions. I, I personally like to, to cruise a lot. I started off, as Tisha mentioned, a lot of people start off on Carnival. I started off on Carnival and then I kind of graduated, I said I graduated a little bit and went to Royal Caribbean and I've kind of been sticking with Royal Caribbean uh, um, as of late. Um, so when people come to me asking about, about cruises, I tend to go to Royal Caribbean first and show them that. And then they'll, you know, they might say, what about Carnival? Well, I'll tell you about that too, if that's what you want to, uh, to know about. But I definitely try to steer them towards a Royal Caribbean first, only because I, I really enjoy Royal Caribbean. Um, uh, so we're talking about groups here. And uh, 
So we have, as Tisha mentioned, various types of groups. And so you have those groups that come to you, they're already preformed, right? And so you already kind of know uh, who your leader is and whatnot. And so what I've done, I've, I've been working with uh, Affinity Group and I, I created my own group. Uh, and so the way I was able to do this during COVID when we were not cruising, I was already in some cruising groups, but I started joining a bunch of other cruising groups, just any cruising group I could get into. If it looked like it's something interesting to me, I would join that group. And so I, then I started building relationships in those groups. If people were asking questions about, well, what, are, what does Carnival do for kids? Or what do they do about dining on Royal Caribbean? I would just go in and, and answer their questions. So not, not as a travel agent, right? I'm just going in and answering questions for people and basically showcasing my knowledge, right? And then they're like, hey, that girl kind of knows what she's talking about. She's answering a lot of questions in here. And so eventually what that led to was somebody uh, saying, hey, we would like a group. Uh, I, well, they, they said, hey, I would like to cruise with other breast cancer survivors. And I was like, you know what? I can help you plan that. Uh, if you'd like to really uh, do that, let, then let's do that. So I took that idea and ran with it, right? So I, I, I created a Facebook group. I invited uh, the three people that said that they were interested. So the group started with four and, and within a month, I had over 200 people in my group. So it was all about me talking to them and, and, and telling them all about Royal Caribbean and telling them about the different places we could go. I created little videos so that they could see some of uh, the places, the ports that uh, Royal Caribbean goes to. Uh, I was sharing that information with them. Once I created that group, I made sure that I was making posts in there at a minimum of twice a week. I was posting something in there to keep the people engaged in the group, right? And so since this was a group that I created, as Tisha mentioned already, that means that I'm the leader. So I'm doing all the work as far as marketing and what have you, because th there is no leader for this group, but it is an affinity group because these people all have something in common. They're wanting to cruise with a purpose. They're cruising because they are survivors. And so I've called this, I termed it the survivor cruise group, right? And so, and that's how the word got out. And then people in there started sharing with other people that they knew and they're like, oh, can we share with somebody? Absolutely, share this link make it easy for them. I created a QCR code that they could use. I have the links that they can use for, for uh, the group and, and make sure that I post that, not just assuming that people know how to grab the link and share it because some people are not tech savvy, right? So it's better if you go ahead and make that post. It says, here's a link to the group. Please share this with whoever might be interested. Right, and as I continue to do that, I just continue to see this, this group grow and grow. So one of the other things that I've done with this group, because there's no leader, I had to figure out, okay, when are we gonna cruise? Where are we cruising from and all that? So I decided to use polls. Now, some people may or may not like to do that. The, the thing is, if you're creating those polls and things, to me, that's you getting the, the group engaged in the planning of the cruise, right? So you're asking them, wh where do you want to cruise out of, right? List out a few ports, uh, that that you're familiar with, right? I listed out a few ports that I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with Galveston. I'm familiar with going out of Orlando. So those were two of my top choices that I put in there and I let people vote. I gave them a time limit for when they can vote on that thing, close that poll. And okay, now the majority has spoken. We're leaving out of Orlando. All right, we're leaving out of Orlando. Here's four, cho four choices for um, the, the ship and the date. Uh, you know, we chose the date that we wanted to go July, 2023. Okay, well now, now here are the choices for the chip, the ships. They voted on that. And in fact, I just closed that poll on Friday. So now I know that uh, this, now we know where we're going. We're, we know we're going to the Bahamas. We know we're going out of Orlando and we know we're going on Adventure of the Seas. So now I can put together my marketing plan for actually selling these cabins. So that's what I'm doing. Actually, I've been working on that today. Uh, <laughs> I form, create my group at, in the uh, in Espresso so that I have the group uh, sell there. So I'm ready to start putting uh, individual um, people into their cabins. I also use Travel Joy. So I'm creating a booking uh, landing page for the group so that I can share that link in the group and say, hey, go to this go to this link. And when they go to that link, it's gonna have all the information uh, specifically tailored to that group. I've got you know, the pink ribbon for them because they're, so the, it's a breast cancer survivor group, 
right? So that the pink ribbons on the landing page, all the information, video embedded videos and things so that they can see the ship, they can see the type of fun that they can have on, on the ship. Uh, so that's how I've been able to grow this group. And now I'm over 265 people in the group and in just under two months, which I think is phenomenal. So, uh, and this is actually my first group, y'all. This is my first, my first big cruise group. And it really is just taking on a life of its own. So I would say that whatever your passion is, go for that, go in that area. I'm passionate about survivorship. I'm passionate about uh, giving back. I'm, and I'm, I'm passionate about travel. So cruising with a purpose fits into what I, what I, myself like to do and therefore i'm excited about it and i'm excited to tell other people about it and talk to those folks one of the other things i've done is member spotlights so these folks even though they are an affinity group in that they all have something in common they don't all know each other these are a bunch of strangers that happen to have something in common so i decided to reach out to them and say hey is anybody in here willing to do a member spotlight i'll set up a time with you we'll get on zoom we'll do a recording i'll send you the questions beforehand so you know what i'm going to ask you we get on zoom and i've gone through i do a little interview with them they tell me about them their self and what have you and then i'm gonna put that together in a video and put it out in the group so that the group start because the, the more the they feel like they're included in that group the more they feel they they, they want to go oh i want to go because i want to meet her because she went through something similar to what i went through or she seems like fun i want to be on the cruise when she's on the cruise that kind of thing so it's all about engaging those folks that you get in the group. And sure, you're going to see numbers go up and down. I've seen some leave and, and some come, come back, but you can't worry with that. You have to keep pressing forward and keep marketing, marketing, marketing. <laughs> so when you was first learning Norwegian, excuse me, Royal Caribbean and how to book groups with them, did you, did you find it daunting or easy? Like, how would you feel that system is? That I, I actually think it's extremely easy to okay. uh, if, to use uh, the Royal Caribbean group site. I mean, it's really a one, it's, it's a four step process creating a group in Royal Caribbean in the back office. Um, the first thing I did though, is I went to Royal Caribbean U and did their training, right? So I got my Bachelor of Adventure. That was the very first thing I did. So all of that training, so you get some knowledge under your belt. Because even though I have cruised with uh, Royal Caribbean, I still didn't know a lot of things that I learned back there. And knowing that stuff allows me to answer questions quickly in my group. And it makes it seem like I know what I'm talking about. Because I say I'm the travel expert, so I need to know what I'm talking about in there. So um, I would definitely recommend if you're going to start creating groups for any type of cruise that you actually go in there and do the training so that you uh, have an understanding of how it works. Also go in that back office, go in there and click on those buttons. Start clicking those buttons like you're gonna create a group. You don't have to go all the way through to the end, but at least you'll get to see for yourself what those screens look like, the kinds of information that are being that's being asked. So you'll have an idea of how to do it when you're actually ready to do it. Cause you wanna strike while it's hot, right? Once you people are saying, yeah, I wanna go, you wanna get your page up and running quickly so that you can get people booked as quickly as possible. I also recommend not following those minimum guidelines for uh, deposits. Get the deposit you need to birth the room, right? If, yes. if it's a, if $100 or if it's $200, try to get that so that your, your crew, your booking, uh, your group is secured, right? Um, and all of that you'll learn when you go through the, um, the training. I also uh, watch the videos at IntelliTravel. There, if you go into the back office into IntelliTravel University and search through the videos, you'll find videos for every single cruise line uh, having to do with groups and watch those videos. They take you right through from beginning to end, all the important things that you need to know about getting a, a group together, about actually booking the group and all of that. So and if um, you're with a different agency, because as we know, a lot of you are, are some of you are in teletravel, some of you are under smaller agencies and mom and pop shops, they all should have access to some kind of group cruise training. And if not, the suppliers have some amazing information that you can be a part of. And, and if you're on Facebook, which I think everybody is, you can actually join the cruises Facebook groups. 
since COVID, Absolutely. a lot of the suppliers have created Facebook groups. And for some agencies, we have um, groups specifically just for those agencies. So that gives you a chance to go in and ask the questions and stuff like that. So now I'm going to ask you this. What is your favorite ship so far on Royal Caribbean and why? Well, so, so far I've been on Mariner of the Seas and I was on, this last one I was on was Liberty uh, of the Seas. And I, I, I like that one. Actually, to me, they, um, they're they all kind of similar in that there's always the same type of things. You know, you got your little mall that you can go through. You got your casino, you have your, your club. I personally like Liberty of the Seas this last time. One, because we weren't at full capacity. So it felt like we had control of that ship. You hear me? Like, <laughs> when I tell you we took over that club, we took over the club. Like, uh, so I like that. The, the other thing I like about... Uh, Liberty of the Seas, to me, uh, everyone, not only were the people friendly on there, but they were very attentive when it came to making sure that people were doing the right things, washing your hands, making sure people were wearing the mask when they were supposed to be wearing the mask or not, or using hand sanitizer. I mean, they had extra employees around the ship uh, to do that. So that's not even ship specific. That's really just about how Royal Caribbean rolls. Uh, because I found that even with my very first time being on Royal Caribbean, I was highly impressed with their hygiene, right? They have the little station that you can go through before you ever even get into the buffet area. There's a whole hand washing station. Like when I was on Carnival, they did not have that, right? So people just walk in and start touching stuff, right? Whereas they had a, 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 an employee standing there saying, oh, please don't forget to wash your hands uh, before you go into the dining area. So those little things like that, that Royal Caribbean does, I, I, I truly appreciate. Well, you gave some amazing information. Um, people are saying that this is awesome. And you gave a really good insight and really good idea because one of the questions that came up was how do you come up with group ideas? And you gave an example. You know, somebody basically said one thing and you said, okay, you took the baton and you ran with it. Guys, understand, it could be any kind of group ideas. Do not rack your brains. Do not make it like... Um, over anything like we're doing a July a July 4th cruise on Virgin Voyages and I turned it into a singles cruise because I'm single and it's July 4th <laughs> and if I'm not single he gonna have to pretend we single for a couple of days so mama can go make that money but it, it was just finding out what's what's the need in your network understand that what you choose and what you try to market is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but it might be their cup of tea for the next go around. They might say, well, you know what? I really want to go on that cruise with you, but work's not going to let me off. What are you doing next month? Or what are you doing six months from now? You know, that's going to be the, be the kind of the way, the way that it kind of goes. Um, as far as the dates to book your groups, honestly, Book the group dates when they want to go. Just understand that if you're going to go during the summertime, prices are going to be higher. Um, if you try to stay away from the kids, you got to go during like winter before Christmas break, because trust and believe these folks will pull kids out to go on a seven day cruise. They will pull them out, especially now that they understand how to homeschool properly. They will school these kids on the ship. But you want to go on days where kids are generally going to be in going to be in school as far as how soon should I book a group cruise? I say 18 months at minimum, 18 months at minimum, especially if you do not have a strong number of people like she does uh, ready to go. They're ready to go. So it's probably not gonna take that long for them to drop the money and be ready to go and probably grow her group even some more once word gets out that there's an actual set date, set ship and everything. Um, but you wanna make sure that you give your people enough time to think about it, because we know how that goes, right? I'm gonna think about this for three months before I make a decision to give you $50. Then you have to go ahead and deal with the, uh, the final due date. You wanna make sure that the final due date is in enough time that economically they can afford it. Now, I'm not saying judge anyone's pockets, but if a cruise is two years out and the payments is $150 a month, that's pretty affordable for most people when you break it down like that. Um, most cruise lines for are uh, is about six months before the sailing is average about six months when the final payment is due. So you want to take that into account when you're doing your planning and different things like that. Um, like I see someone saying, how do you come up with something creative outside of spring break and Christmas cruises? You can do Halloween cruises, horror movie cruises. 
you can do um, singles cruises, you can do uh, Girl Scout cruises, Boy Scout cruises, church cruises. I love the Bahamas cruises. I'm single this time, cruise. There's a movie called The Pass. You could do The Pass Cruise where everybody's on a pass. You could do adult themed cruises if you're dealing with like Virgin Voyages. Temptation does adult only cruises and Desire where Desire is clothing optional. There are LGBT cruises that you could do. You could theme it any way that you want and you don't have to make it anything crazy or out too far out the box because you want people to attend. You could do a teacher's appreciation cruise. You could do a military appreciation cruise, a first responders cruise. You know, you could do all different types of cruises. My mom wants to do a retiree cruise where you can't say unless you retire. And I said, how's that gonna work? Cause I'm coming. She goes, well, you're special cause you actually booked it. We might need you. I said, okay, as long as I'm special, I can still go. You know, you also have river cruises that you can get into. River cruises makes a lot, a lot of money. But there's so many different ways that you can theme it. You know, I highly suggest if you are going to get into cruises, you do at least two groups a year. So with that being said, I want to thank Ms. Wallace for being here, spending her time, giving us all of that beautiful information. I can't wait to see how this cruise pans out. I'm going for 300 people on your cruise. I'm going to book. They're going to have so much fun. And I love the idea. I love the idea. Um, I got some questions for you that I'm going to ask you offline. But with that, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to go ahead and I want you to go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe, go ahead and share this with other people who might want to be other agents that might want to do some learning. Uh, make sure you follow my IG. My IG information is in the comment box. Everybody here, thank you for spending almost 57 minutes with us talking about cruises. Now, I know at this point, you're going to go out there, you're going to book your cruises, and we're going to go ahead and sell. This is Tisha signing off.